Hi everyone, Luke here from Solid State Logic, and today we're taking a closer look at the new SSL 2 Plus Mark II audio interface. What's new, and how to get set up with your system and working in your DAW. So following the huge success of SSL's smallest interface duo, the 2 and 2 Plus Mark IIs build upon the foundations of the previous generations, bringing incredible performance from a small bus-powered USB interface, perfect for streamlined pro audio setups, or for your first steps into audio music creation. The SSL 2 Plus Mark II is a 2-in, 4-out, bus-powered USB interface for Mac and PC, with two mic pre and switchable line and high-Z inputs for plugging in your instruments directly to the interface for recording, and two headphone outputs with separate level controls and mix sources. The interface also features MIDI in and MIDI out, and two pairs of DC coupled outputs for hooking up monitors, external effects, or even controlling your modular synths directly for the interface. The SSL 2 Plus features two class-leading SSL design preamps specifically designed for our USB-powered interfaces. Our two-stage design uses a mixture of specifically chosen discrete low-noise transistors in combination with ICs and enables us to design mic preamps with exceptional low-noise performance and super gain range, enough to drive any microphone in your studio. What's more, with the built-in loopback functionality, you can easily record your computer system audio perfect for things like streaming, podcasting, or creative audio sampling. The possibilities are endless. And with all these features, the evolution of the Mark II brings with it increased performance with higher dynamic range across all inputs and outputs, as well as using the latest 32-bit converters, ensuring high fidelity sound for all your recordings. And whilst the SSL 2 Plus Mark II's 32-bit conversion is designed to be completely transparent, ensuring your audio is pristine and true to source, we can also engage SSL's proprietary 4K mode a completely analog enhancement feature that takes inspiration from the SL4000 series console, bringing life and vibe to boring and sterile sound sources, the forward high frequency boost and subtle harmonic distortion for more edge and mojo directly from the interface. So if you're looking at your first interface to begin your audio recording journey, or you're a seasoned professional looking for a small, portable recording and monitoring solution that shares the same DNA with our larger consoles to throw in your touring bag, the SSL 2 Plus Mark II is a perfect tool to bring with you on every audio adventure. When first opening your new SSL 2 Plus Mark II, carefully fold back the cardboard box lid and you'll find the SSL 2 Plus Mark II, the quick start safety guide, a 1.5 meter USB C to C type cable and USB A to C adapter. The type of USB port you have available on your computer will determine if you need to use the included adapter. Newer computers may have C ports, whereas older computers may have type A ports. So if required, please use the included adapter and connect your new interface to your system as appropriate. As the SSL 2 Plus Mark II is powered entirely from the computer's USB bus power, the interface requires no external power supply. You'll see when the unit is receiving power correctly, the green USB LED will light a steady green color. We recommend for best stability and performance using the included USB cable. Long USB cables, especially three meters and above, should be avoided as they tend to suffer from inconsistent performance and are unable to provide steady and reliable power to the unit. Once you're connected up and the power light is showing, it's now time to set up our SSL 2 Plus Mark II with our operating system. In the following sections, we'll look at setting up your new interface for both Mac and PC, so feel free to skip to the appropriate section to get going. But first, let's get your interface registered and allow access to the incredible suite of bundled software to get you started on your recording journey. By registering your SSL USB audio interface, you'll now have access to an array of exclusive software from us and other industry-leading software companies. We call this bundle the SSL Production Pack, which includes doors, plugins, and a host of other useful software to help make the most of your new interface. So, to register your product, head to solidstatelogic.com forward slash get dash started and follow the on-screen instructions. During the registration process, you'll need to input the serial number of your unit. This can be found on the label on the base of your unit. Once you've completed registration, all of your software content will be available in your logged in user area. You can return to this area at any time by logging back into your SSL account at solidstatelogic.com forward slash login, where you can download the software anytime you're ready. Now we have everything we need, let's get set up with our operating system.
So for using your SSL interface with your Mac, you can simply plug in the interface with the provided USB-C type cable and head up to your system settings. And under the sound tab, select your SSL interface for both the input and output device and away you go. Now in your DAW, make sure you also select your SSL interface as your input and output device or select system audio to follow the system settings and now you can use your new interface. For more information on using your SSL interface, you can also check out the manual that's located in the download section of the SSL website. Just head to solidstatelogic.com, navigate to the downloads page and then select the SSL2 slash 2 plus mark 2 and there you'll find the user manual to help get you started. For using your SSL interface with your Windows system, we need to download the SSL ASIO slash WDM drivers from the Solid State Logic website. So let's jump over to solidstatelogic.com and head over to the download section, then select your SSL interface, then the drivers for the SSL2 slash 2 plus mark 2 ASIO slash WDM driver. Once downloaded, run the installer, then once complete you'll be all ready to get set up. In the download section, you'll also find the user manual to help you get started and guide you through the installation process in more detail. Once you've installed the USB audio driver required to make the unit operational, you will then have noticed that as part of the installation that the SSL USB control panel will also have been installed onto your computer. This control panel will report details such as what sample rate and buffer size your SSL2 or 2 Plus Mark II is running at. You can adjust both sample rate and buffer settings in the control panel, but you should also be aware that both sample rate and buffer size will be taken control by your DAW when it's opened. One aspect you can control from the SSL USB control panel is the tick box for safe mode on the buffer settings tab. Safe mode defaults to ticked but can be unticked. Unticking safe mode will reduce the overall output latency of your device, which may be useful if you're looking to achieve the lowest possible round trip latency in your recording. However, Unticking this may cause unexpected audio clicks and pops if your system is under strain. Once the drivers are installed, head down to the Audio Settings tab and select your SSL interface as your audio device and now you're ready to jump into your DAW and select your SSL interface as your audio device there too. And now you'll be ready to get recording. Now that we're set up with our operating system, it's now time to configure our interface with our preferred DAW. No matter which DAW you are using, you need to ensure that the SSL2 or 2 Plus Mark II is selected as your audio device in the audio preferences and playback settings. In the following sections, we've demonstrated the process for some of the most popular DAWs, but if your chosen DAW isn't listed in this video, then please refer to your DAW's user guide to see where these options can be found. In Live, head up to the Live Settings tab. Then when the window opens, on the Audio tab, select the Audio Input and Output Devices as your SSL2 Plus Mark II, followed by setting up the Input and Output Config settings for them to show up as external routing devices like so. Selecting both the inputs and outputs as both mono and stereo routes will give you full flexibility when routing audio in and out of your session via the interface. Whilst in this window, we can also specify the session's sample rate and buffer size, remembering that high sample rates and lower buffers will reduce overall latency but at the cost of the system's CPU usage and increase file sizes. So adjust these settings to maximise performance depending on your intended use. When in Logic, head up to the Settings tab, then select the Audio page. Under Devices, select the SSL2 Plus Mark II as your input and output devices and you're good to go. Whilst in this window, we can also specify the session's buffer size, remembering that higher sample rates and lower buffers will reduce overall latency, but at the cost of system CPU usage and increase file size. So adjust these settings to maximise performance depending on your intended use. When in Pro Tools, head up to the Setup tab, then select Playback Engine. Here, under Devices, you'll able to select your SSL2 Plus Mark II. Whilst in this window, we can also specify the session's buffer size, remembering that higher sample rates and lower buffers will reduce overall latency but at the cost of system CPU usage and increase file size. 
so adjust these settings to maximize performance depending on your intended use. Once you've set this, head over to the I.O. tab in the same setup menu to make sure your inputs, outputs and buses are all aligned with your interface connections and now you're good to go. So now we're set up in your DAW of choice, let's look at connecting up your gear and get recording. First off, let's look at setting up your monitors. Assuming outputs 1 and 2 are our primary outputs in your DAW, outputs 1 and 2 on the 2 Plus will be your main speaker outputs. So let's take a pair of TRS jacks and take the outputs 1 and 2 of the SSL 2 Plus Mark II and connect them to your monitor inputs. And now we should hear audio playback from our system and we can control the volume with the large black knob. Whilst we have audio playback, let's look at headphones. We can connect our headphones using a quarter inch jack connector to the headphone outputs at the bottom right of the interface. At the top, again on the right, we then have the headphone monitor source controls. When we have the monitor mix turned fully clockwise to the USB playback label, the headphone outputs will be a copy of our outputs 1 and 2 and the level control is located here at the bottom right, with a pair of level control pots for both headphones A and B. We want this setting when monitoring our system audio, whether that's our DAW output or other applications such as YouTube or our preferred music streaming service. If, on the other hand, we want to listen to our input source with zero latency, we can move this dial fully counterclockwise to the input label. This now sends the input signal from the input channel directly to the headphones for direct monitoring, and then we can use the knob to blend the sources, giving us the ability to monitor our inputs in real time alongside our DAW output, ideal for overdubbing parts or for when you're recording a podcast and want to play back system audio too. Just make sure that when you are directly monitoring your input source that you mute those outputs in the DAW to avoid any doubling in your headphones. You'll notice above the input label on the mix knob we have the stereo switch. This will change the inputs from being sent as a mono source to the headphones, playing equally in both the left and right sides into a stereo signal, so we can now real-time monitor a stereo source using both inputs, or have an input source only in our left or right side of our headphones. You'll also notice that next to Headphones B control, we have the button labelled 3 and 4. When unselected, Headphones B will receive the same mix as outputs 1 and 2. But by engaging 3 and 4, we're now able to create an alternative mix sent from our DAW and send this to our Headphones B. This is useful if we want to send an alternative mix out to an artist when recording. So jumping over to my DAW, I can set up a separate monitor mix and send this out to outputs 3 and 4, which will now be available on the interface jack outputs 3 and 4, and now by selecting the 3 and 4 button, also on the headphones B output. As standard, the headphones B output will be fed from the 3 and 4 output when the 3 and 4 button is engaged, allowing the option to retain low latency control of headphones A, but utilise headphones B output for a direct door feed. This becomes useful for letting an engineer listen to the recorded audio in headphones B whilst the artist listens with zero latency in headphones A, or if we want to use headphones B output for external processing with an external level control. However, if we press and hold the 3 and 4 button until the 3 and 4 LED begins flashing, this will switch in the input and USB monitor mix control at the top, blending the input signal with the playback signal assigned to the 3 and 4 output feeding headphones B. This is useful for when the artist using headphones B wants to hear themselves with zero latency but requires a different mix than the one feeding headphones A. Now we have our monitoring sorted, let's look at the inputs. As we know, we have two mic pre's, but these can also accept line level sources using the line button at the top of the channel. We can also see we have a plus 48 volt button to add phantom power for active ribbons and condenser microphones, and a high pass filter for removing unwanted bass rumble from sources to clean up recordings. We then have the red gain knob that lets us set the input level for the source, with up to 64 dB of clean gain, more than enough power for even the most delicate ribbon mic or vintage dynamic mic without adding any noise. The meter below each channel gives us representation of the input signal, with the red light at the top indicating a clipping mic pre. For optimal recording, look to gain the mic pre till we see an average level of about minus 18 dB, maybe peaking somewhere around minus 12 dB where the meter will peak the three green lights, with it okay to occasionally flicker into minus 10 dB with the amber LED lighting up and being safe from clipping. Finally, we have the 4K button. 
Engaging this switch allows us to add some extra analog magic to your input when you need it, injecting a combination of high frequency EQ boost together with some finely tuned harmonic distortion to help enhance sound, inspired by the kind of extra character of the legendary SSL 4000 series console. We also have the option to use the inputs at the front labelled Instruments 1 and 2. These are specifically set up for high Z sources such as direct electric guitar or bass. The high Z sets the correct impedance and allows us to record the instruments without an amp and we can utilise amp modelling sims in the box to have greater options for control later on. Once plugged in, the interface will auto detect the high Z input and auto switch the inputs. Now, the interface also has a second pair of outputs, and these can be used for a variety of different scenarios. In your DAW, you could use outputs 3 and 4 to send audio out to an external effects unit or reamp box for re recording audio back through an amp. Another nice feature is that the outputs are DC coupled, so we can also send control voltage to an analog modular rig, where I can use Ableton CV tools or an app here like the ALM PAMS clock to lock my modular rig to my DAW tempo and sync my external clocking. And finally, the SSL2 Plus Mark II features DIN MIDI in and out connections, allowing MIDI control for outboard synthesizers or drum machines and the ability to capture MIDI information into your DAW, ideal for capturing ideas on your keyboard whilst recording the audio outputs too. So now we've fully covered the controls of your new interface, you should be ready to dive in and get recording. But if you need further assistance, the in-depth user guide is available from solidstatelogic.com forward slash support and will go deeper into all the aspects of the interface as covered here, as well as more information on the entire SSL product line. Thank you again for choosing the SSL2 Plus Mark II and keep an eye out for more tips, tricks and tutorial content to help you get the best out of your SSL gear.